Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see about IPsec that is IKE phase 2. We have already seen about a, a phase 1 process. Once a phase 1 process has been completed, we move on to a phase 2. Uh, why the phase 2 is being used means it is mainly for a data transformation from one row end to another end that is between the peer ends. Uh, the data should be transmitted. For the data transmission, we are creating a phase 2. Uh, by default, in terms of data transmission, there is no security. In order to provide a security, there are two main IPsec protocols. Are there. they are AH and ESP. AH is nothing but authentication header, and ESP is encapsulating security payload. Uh, both does uh, similar works, but ESP only supports encryption. The encryption is not supported in AH. That is the authentication header. And there are two main modes for each of the protocols that is both AH and ESP. Both supports transport mode and tunnel mode. What is the difference between these modes means um, well in case of transport mode the IP header that we are using the same IP header will be uh, more to the peer end. It will not be changed. That's the transport mode. While in case of tunnel mode it will generate a new IP header and it will be transformed. To make it clear you can just look at this information. Uh, this is our normal IP header that is a data and then a TCP header and this is our IP header. This is our normal original IP header. Uh, this is an example for uh, AH transport mode and tunnel mode. This, it, will, uh, it will be similar as that in ESP mode. Okay, This is how it looks in terms of transport mode. The data and TCP will be there and this original IP header here the IP header will be here right. This IP header will be here that is IP header and authentication header will be used here. So this is how a transport mode will looks like. But while in case of tunnel mode, the entire data over here will be given with a uh, authentication header and a new IP header will be generated. So uh, the IP header of a uh, original IP header will not be revealed to the other end. So this is the difference between a transport mode and tunnel mode. Transport mode uses its own um, IP header while the tunnel mode will generate a new IP header. That's the difference between them. And this is our uh, configuration part. This is our uh, command. That is, if you just look at it, first we are just um, creating a transform set. What does the transform set means? It is nothing but our uh, for negotiating. That is, what type of protocols that we are using, which method. That is, our hashing algorithm, authentic uh, encryption. This is all the process. What we are doing. Is being given in that transform set. So we are just creating a transform set, crypto IPsec transform set, and this is our transport set name that we are going to give, and um, this is our alg uh, which are algorithm that we are going to run. So once it is given, the transform set will be created, IPsec transform set will be created. Next, we just want to map the transform set to a profile or a map, which are things that we are creating. Uh, here in this example, I'm just giving you as a IPsec profile. So profile name, and we just want to uh, use a keyword as set transform set and give the transform set name that we have used over here. Here. So if we have given this name, and then we just want to configure it in the concern interface. That's it about uh, basic configuration. And you can also use instead of crypto IPsec profile, you can also create a map. But a map will be used mainly in terms of policy based routing that is only the unicast packet will be transmitted in that case uh, we mostly prefer a map but uh, if you need to create a map there are certain criteria to be um, done in order to make the map uh, to be up in the case example as the parent should be correctly configured access list is a must in that case access list should be configured and uh, um, parent should be configured and transform set this also should be done if this is all the basic things that has to be done for making the crypto map available. If anyone is missing, crypto map won't get up. Um, and uh, in th this interface, crypto map is being configured onto the same interface. No issue in that. But if you are having your multiple peers, in that case, you just want to configure a dynamic map. And then from the dynamic map, you need to configure a crypto map and uh, you need to assign to a map it to the concern interface. All these concepts we just see it in our lab process. No issue in that. And just make note of it while using uh, 
uh, if you are configured a NAT in the router and you are using the IPsec over here, the NATing will blocks the uh, packet to be transmitted via uh, VPN. That is IPsec. The issue is that you need to create an access list in order to overcome the issue. So uh, if a NATing is being done on the router and if you are trying to reach a consent peer with this, it will not be reachable. So in order to overcome that, you just need to create an exemption for the consent packet that is the IPsec packet uh, so that the packet can be generated and the packet can be reachable to the consent peer. This is mainly for a policy based VPN. That is a unicast packet VPN. This is a must. But while in case of uh, GRE, that is a route based VPN, NATing is not mandatory. No need of NATing because packets should be automatically be used. Keep a note of it. Well, in case of policy based VPN, that is a unicast packet. Uh, if you are configuring IPsec, there is an exemption of ACL should be there, or else the consent packet will not go via. Uh, it will not be encrypted and decrypted and go via the consent peer. Adding is a must in policy based VPN, but in case of route based VPN, it's not there. That's it about phase two. Uh, more about we see in the labs about a configuration part. That's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.